This week we built a custom drive line and a bunch of suspension parts so we can see if our not so mini Cooper works as good as it looks. It's finally time to finish the bare necessities and put it to the test. I don't think I understand the physics here. Ethan obviously does or he'd be as nervous as I am. interest of actually being able to drive this once we uh, get all the pieces for the brakes and such, while I'm waiting for those pieces, I realized maybe I ought to put an air filter on it. So um, there's this boot that was in the spare parts bin that came with it, which obviously went to the intake. Um, the factory air box is, doesn't really fit anywhere in here. And also we don't, I, there's no real reason to use it. Off we go to borrow an air filter from something else. Uh, I'm just gonna borrow the one from the Ute because that's got broken axles at the moment and we don't have immediate plans to do anything with it. Is that some real tasty grass you got there? You're not a cow, you know. You know what? I'm gonna steal that section too. That'll be potentially handy. Remind all of ourselves not to drive this thing until we put an air filter back in. It's okay, it doesn't have axles, so it should be pretty easy to remember that. Another thing on my list of small items to accomplish is cut off the old power steering orbital valve bracket because it's in the wrong place and in the way. The exhaust runs into it right now. I'm gonna lop that off real quick probably won't be that quick. Come on. Man, on this build especially, the things that Whoever built this decided like, oh, that needs to be extra strong versus other things. Like, okay, yeah, these little teeny tiny bolts for the U-bolts, fine. Just drill and tap them into this. Yeah, that'll be great. Steering bracket. You know what? Quarter inch isn't thick enough. Let's use three eighths and let's weld it on both sides and put a gusset on it. Yeah, that's the thing that needs to be the strongest. Oh yeah, that is thick. Right? Jeez, why? Like, why? I don't know. I mean, yeah, if you didn't have any braces, you'd need it that thick, but it had a brace as well. Again, in the interest of tidying up some loose ends on the Mini Cooper, uh, I'm making a brace to reinforce the steering bracket, the uh, steering mount bracket that I made. The machine is always capable of that nice of a cut, but I don't always get the settings accurate enough for it to cut that nice. That worked out well. Now, if that had no hexagons in it, it'd just be a little weird shaped chunk of steel. But with the hexagons, it looks very fancy. Oh, and those, those little hexagons make it so I can have something to hold on to. To, uh, Locate it. Yeah. The angle's not 100% perfect, but it's sure close enough. Next up, I'm working on the shifter. So I already found a way to adapt the end of the um, shifter cable from the mini to uh, the shift lever on the transmission here. And now I'm making a bracket to hold it. This is the, it's got, I actually took this piece from the mini, um, which clips into here, like so. We get to find out if the shift linkage is gonna work at all. I have no idea what gear the transmission's in right now. Fun fact, this little bracket here 
I, I was trying to figure out what I wanted to use for this, and I thought, hmm, maybe I'll just look through my recent files on the ArcDroid until I see something that looks like it might work. And this is a trailing arm mount from the jet boat. So I just cut out another one, didn't have to design anything, I just drilled the hole out a little bigger, and it worked. That's very nice. Yeah, once you've designed about a thousand parts for the plasma cutter, well, I probably am not even close to a thousand. A couple hundred, maybe. You have a pretty good library of random weird shaped brackets and such. There's really no way to know whether that's reversed or the right way. But honestly, it'd be kind of funny if it was like, park? <laughs> Drive! <laughs> <laughs> Backward. Actually, what I'm going no. about is you the. Uh, I saw it in there, Will. No, I that. saw it. I saw it. I don't know you. Oh no. There we have it. Inline thermo switch. Complete with grounding lug. Because the way that this, well, it could work multiple ways, but in this case, the way I'm going to use it is uh, to ground it because that's how the relay works is putting it to ground. So it turns on the relay when grounded. We may not actually need this because if I think about it, now that I think about it, this, when the thermo switch turns on, is grounded to this, which despite being only connected by rubber hose, one would assume that coolant is conductive. We'll find out momentarily. Find out if it kicks on. It's kicked on. Look at that. Haha. -ha. Like magic. That's good that that worked. Yeah. Now we get to see what happens when we shut the engine off. I realized the way I set it up, the fan's gonna stay on until that thermo switch cools off. Which may be a problem, because that might take a while, given that it's mounted not to the radiator. Right. I'll solve that problem later, because right now we're not gonna be driving it that much. This was really just a momentary obsession that I couldn't let go of until I finished it. <laughs> Oh, Steven, I have a surprise for you. What do you got? I looked at Onyx. The Rubicon Trail opens February 1st. That gives us a premium amount of time to get the Mini Cooper ready. You missed out on the last adventure with a much better machine on the Rubicon. Wait, we're taking the Mini Cooper to the Rubicon? I mean, we should. It's an eight out of 10. I wonder what a 10 out of 10 is. Anyways, I'm just gonna download it offline now and I'm gonna imagine us swindling through the Rubicon and the Mini Cooper whenever I don't have service. That's gonna be my new daydreaming. Uh, next to my list of things to do in no particular order is uh, find a spot to actually mount the battery because I just had it kind of plopped down in that corner wedged in there and that was fine for a quick test but uh, we're gonna want it to be better than that for permanent, you know? And I'm kind of thinking of maybe doing it here. It'd be very, very unorthodox to mount the battery to the engine, but where the AC pump would have mounted on this engine, there's four bolts that are in a big black square. So it'd be easy to make a bolt-on battery tray and I could add some rubber for vibration isolation. And it'd just be a really convenient spot for it to go. This 
a uh, great example of why torch, torch height compensation is an excellent feature. Look, runs into it there, half an inch of clearance here. With a little bit of THC, it's no problem. Those are the little flops so that I bend the sides up. Now, let's see if we can bend it in the mag frame. Oh, one day soon, we won't have to move everything just to get to one tool. Yeah. Oh yeah, that bends, but just barely. That's, uh... Yeah, that's pretty thick for this break, huh? Yeah, I mean, it would never do it if it wasn't um, just a few little tabs. In fact, those tabs might have been a little small. Some of them are slightly cracked at the edges. But when the corners are welded, it'll be more than strong enough. The side ones, though, we're going to have to do those by hand because there's no way that just the little block is going to be enough clamp pressure to bend that. It fits nicely. And then I think I'll probably just weld a nut on the side here for a bolt to clampy clamp it down. <clears throat> Didn't even need any kinetic persuasion yet. No, I'll need some kinetic persuasion for the last little smidgen. But, uh, plus all of these little slots here, drain holes. Well, and these. No water shall be trapped in this battery tray. Obviously I can't weld this on because if I weld it on, uh, it won't be removable to pull, say, the engine or get access to the alternator or whatever. So it can't be welded, which means it has to be bolted, which I'd already thought of, but I didn't think about the fact that um, the bolts would be uh, in the way of the bottom of the battery. So. I marked out where the edges are so I could put one in the corner here and here. And I can put one there. That only works if you continue with an Optima battery, but that's probably fine. Put the battery in it and mark where it sits. a little sproingy for my liking. Anybody with half a brain could have predicted that it would be sproingy. <clears throat> if only I had half of a brain. Oh. I fixed the wiggliness. I just put a spacer under there because the one side wasn't bolted down tight and now it's plenty solid. And I welded a nut here and I have a big long bolt fits into said nut. So now I'm just gonna make a little uh, little angle bracket thingy that just clamps down this corner of the battery because this side can't move at all. Also, I need to make a little notch there for this negative terminal, but it doesn't matter because that's the negative. So if it bumps against this, it doesn't hurt anything because it's already grounded. Oh, it sounded... Maybe I need a new blade on that? Yeah, I was gonna say that sounded particularly chunky today. Yeah. Sure seems like it'll do the trick. Yeah, well, it would, except that I use an acorn nut and the bolt is bottoming out in that, so. Um, I'm going 
gonna go grab a different tool and then trim a bit off the bolt. Josh is here and he took one look at the uh, Mini Cooper here and was like, ah, oh, that's why your suspension sucks so bad. Cause he knows more than anyone I've ever met about suspension. That's what I'm best at. Yeah, chassis that's your... and suspension. Exactly. <laughs> this is all wrong. It's comical, but it's wrong. Exactly. So we're gonna make it slightly less wrong. Yeah, it's not that hard to do. And to do it correctly, to get the, the correct shackle length, um, it's actually like a base, kind of a ratio. It's, it's dependent on the spring length. So we're gonna measure the leaf spring length from the center of the bolt hole along the arc all the way to the back of the center of the bolt hole there. So if you want so to get I'll back. Get, yeah, I'll get under here. Along the arc. Yeah, it's 52 inches. Yeah, I mean, as close as we can measure with the yep. bolt plate on there. Yep, so you got 52 inch long leaf springs. Say your shackle length is 10 inches long. It's not, but let's, for the sake of, <laughs> for the sake of math. It probably should be. <laughs> it probably should be, yes. So for the sake of math, uh, 52 inch long leaf spring, and you have a 10 inch shackle, you're gonna wanna subtract the length of the shackle from the length of the leaf spring. So that gives you 42 inches. And then for a, a buffer or a tolerance, you wanna add one bushing wall thickness for every set of bushings. So it's gonna be roughly a quarter inch, quarter inch, quarter inch. So the number that you'll end up with there is gonna be 42 and three quarter inches. That is the number that you're gonna want to be a linear measurement from the center of the shackle hanger to the center of the spring hanger. And from, from this one to yep. this one. Yep, straight linear distance. Yeah. Because that means that no matter what, the shackle can ever cam over like it's doing now. Mm. 52 and three quarter. 52.75 minus whatever this is. 44 and a quarter. Okay. 44.25. 8.5, so our shackles <coughs> should be eight and a half inches long. Yep, so if the shackles are eight and a half inches long, that's the shortest the shackle can be. It also gives you the, 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 whew. <laughs> sprinkler's getting us. <laughs> it gives you the, the, the softest wheel rate you can get with a shackle uh, hanger and spring hanger and leaf spring combination here. Right, so, it makes your it makes your springs as soft as they can be pop, yep. without removing leaves. Yep, and without it camming over and getting locked up. Because right now you have zero compression in your suspension, none. It's bound. Yeah, because right it up. can't change like it can't change length, and it needs to change length to compress. Right. Yeah. So front needs to be eight and a half, and it's the same formula for the back. For the rear. Cool. Well, so let's figure that out now. We'll measure along the. Hold on. Maybe, let's see if yeah. we can do this like more concise. Yes. <laughs> So you measure along the arc of the spring from center to center. You add one bushing wall thickness for each set of bushings. So you add three quarters of an inch and then you subtract the linear distance from the shackle hanger to the spring hanger. And what you're left with is the length of the shackle. The length of the shackle should be. Or if you're doing it the other way and you already have your shackle length, but don't have your spring mount, then you do the math the other way yep. to figure out where your spring mount should be. Science it backwards. Science yep. it backwards. So the back we've got 46. 46. Yep, that so sounds right. 46 and, 46 and three quarters is gonna be our number there. Yep. And, nope, shackle hanger. Oh, shackle hanger, right. 41. 46 and three quarter minus 41. Five, five and three quarter, that, that okay. yeah. So five and three quarter. These ones aren't that far off. Correct. They're only currently four inches, so we only need to add an inch and a quarter to the length of those. Now that we know how to make the Mini Cooper suspension better, thanks to Josh's suspension knowledge, I'm gonna go ahead and design up some fancy new shackles so we can get them cut out and have better suspension. These are the front shackles. I just designed them. They look like uh, some sort of Southwestern art project, I think, you know, except do. something you'd see on a wall of a building in New Mexico or Texas or... It looks sort of Aztec. Az yes, there we go. That's the word I'm looking for. I made them extra fancy um, because instead of cutting them out with the plasma cutter here, like we normally do, we're gonna use Zometry and they're gonna cut them out with 
water jet, which is way more accurate than plasma could ever be, uh, which is pretty cool. So I figured if we're cutting it out super accurate, I might as well make them super fancy. On zometry.com, you can take your own CAD files and turn them into anything you can imagine. They have every process. They can do sheet cutting, CNC milling, 3D printing. They've got it all. It's super easy. You can upload your own CAD files. Zometry has affordable prices. They have super fast shipping and the quality is excellent. This is to within a thousandth of an inch tolerance. So head over to zometry.com slash grind hard and use code grindhard50 to get $50 off your order of $250 or more from now through September 30th. Go check it out and make some cool CNC cut parts. This is one set of the parts I'll need to make one shackle. So I'll just order two sets of this for the front and then I'll design something scaled down for the rear because the rear shackles need to be shorter. This plate here is a stiffener that goes between them. So you can see these little tabs here are gonna go into those little holes and then I can it'll fit all together perfectly. I can just weld those little tabs into the holes and it'll be super duper strong. All of these parts will fit perfectly. The holes will be the right size and it'll be sweet. Plus we get to see some shiny water jet parts. We're here on Zometry and uh, look at all these, look at all these file types. I don't even, I don't even know what all of those are, but I know that what I exported is one of them. I'm exporting each part as its own file. Hi Bjorn. And uh, uploading them here to Zometry and uh, then I just need to select how many of each I need and then we'll get them on the way. Yeah, dog's gonna be excited too. So now we select what we wanna do. We're gonna do the sheet cutting. So, you know, um, water jet and then material. I've got like essentially, oh, we could, we could make these out of hardwood. Yeah, <laughs> cherry wood, cool. poplar, red oak. How about stainless steel, brushed stainless steel? That would look really cool. Finish, yeah, standard add deburring. Nice, that's a good feature. And then quantity, because this is one side of one shackle and we have two shackles that are that length. We go quantity four. We should be good to go on that part. So we save properties. And uh, as you order more parts, parts, they get a lot cheaper individually. Five business days. That's pretty sweet. Look at this big, shiny, beautiful radiator with dual fans and a shroud. Waiting on the uh, parts for the front drive line and such. Uh, while we're waiting on that, I'll install this big shiny radiator. Uh, hopefully it fits. Step one is probably drain some of the coolant. It's kind of nice. I can just, this hose here is a little bit big for this piece of pipe that I use to uh, splice them together. So, Works great. I can just loosen the hose clamp and then if it starts to get too full, my container is overflowing. I can just close it back down. If I hadn't spent all that time putting this fan on there just for a temporary little thing, just pop right off right now. In other words, always do things right the first time or you just waste a bunch of time. Now, this spindly little, <laughs> such a skinny radiator. Will, look at this radiator. It's Pretty like skinny. an AC condenser. Yeah, it is. It's about as thick as one, really. A Subaru, not a Jeep engine driving these giant tires. No cookies for Will. Uh, he keeps his cookies in his pocket anyway, remember? I pulled the fan and shrouds off of this. Let's see if it will go. Come on, just a, just a little, oh, it's so close. Oh, 
I've got this all trimmed out and it, it fits in there reasonably well. I can slide in from the back side or the front side. But now the problem is this obnoxiously large plate here that the bumper's mounted with, which I really was looking for an excuse to fix that anyway, because the bumper is like not tight. So it's only held on by two bolts. I'm gonna go ahead and unbolt the bumper, remove it, figure out how the radiator's gonna mount and then remount the bumper in a better fashion. Time to cut out a couple of little tabs to mount the radiator. So I designed a new one uh, so to have the right sized hole for rib nuts. more rib nuts there and then I'll make a little tab that bolts onto this hole here and then like bends and comes down and bolts to that and then the radiator will be mounted that's a that's a modern art installation I call it cordless spinny boys on a ladder get epoxy this and sell it for like two million maybe rubber would be better because then it allows everything to move around a little bit as you know it will anyway I think I got all the hoses hooked up. Time to put the radiator. Time for some large scale weight reduction on this Mini Cooper bumper situation. Why it was mounted with this giant plate, I will never know, but uh, I'm going to delete it. I might as well keep these plates here. They're already drilled for the bolt hole, uh, bolt pattern on the bumper. And these chunks of, cha of uh, C channel are the same height as the frame rails. So what I'm gonna do is just lop it off with the plasma cutter. And then uh, when we go to put it back on, I'm just gonna weld these to the end of the frame. And then the bumper will still be removable, but um, we'll cut out like 30 pounds of this, this giant angle iron here. <laughs> And hey, it's a piece of usable scrap. We'll go put it behind the green shed with all the other scrap. Brought this thing over here because the new shop doesn't have any tools in it yet. I mean, it's also not finished, but mostly it doesn't have any tools. And it's about 100 degrees out here, so I need every little bit of shade I can get. I have all the parts to, in theory, do the uh, front, uh, front drive shaft. I got a clocking ring for the transfer case, so we can unbolt the transfer case and then re-bolt it on angled down. And then I got a front drive shaft that, in theory, will work. Here we have what's known as a clocking ring. This is new information to me too. I just learned about this. Um, and this goes on here. And then we've got these little, little spindly, little pan head bolts, or cone head, whatever you wanna call them. So those go in there. And those bolt this to the um, transfer case. And then you can see there's three sets of holes here. Um, so we can clock it to any of those three sets and rotate down. And that also allows us to change the position of it. So that's pretty cool. And then these are the studs. I'm gonna assume we're gonna want the farthest amount of clocking would be my guess. And so we have new studs here that just thread into this plate. These should probably all have Loctite on them, but I don't actually have Loctite. I don't think so. Here's the old stud removal technique. Two nuts. 
before you get all the way off. Well, uh, turns out I'm an idiot. And what I ordered here is a clocking ring that goes the wrong direction for what we're trying to do. You can get ones that clock your transfer case down and you can get ones that clock it up. And I ordered the wrong one. Now granted, it's like 60 bucks. I could probably return it. I could probably just order the other one, but uh, it might take a while to get here. And I have tools. So all I have to do to fix this is flip it over and put these bevels for the bolts on the back side, and then it's the same. That's the only difference. I'm essentially making a weird shaped drill bit here. It's interesting. Last night, I uh, chamfered out these holes and that worked in theory to bolt that on. I mean, we'll find out here in a second, but um, it just, you know, flipped it over and now it's clocking it the right direction, which was uh, much faster than ordering the right one. Oh, well, flipping that. that plate over seemed to work good. Yeah, it worked perfectly. Right on there. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that drive shaft will work. I mean, that's just fine. That's not even too extreme of an angle. I mean, obviously it has to go up a little farther, but even still, not bad. And the length will work. What the devil? As Will would say. You know, Will has really influenced our vocabulary. It's concerning how much he's influenced it. It's pretty swindly. Oh. <laughs> I like these strap type U-joints. Uh, There's a lot of ways for U-joints to attach. This way is really easy to remove compared to like um, the ones that, uh, you know, have a big flange and you have to unbolt the whole flange and then like press the U-joints out. Like, I like this. Man. Since it's uh, hot outside and I'm tired, how about I just complain some more? Oh, yeah, I'll just keep complaining. Before we can put this front drive shaft in on the Mini Cooper, uh, I have to swap out the U-joint here. So I gotta take out this regular U-joint and put in this conversion U-joint. You can see how these sides are much larger than these sides. So um, I'm gonna do that real quick here, and then we'll be one step closer to uh, four-wheel drive. All right. Time to hack this ugly chungus of a cross member out of here. Build something uh, better that doesn't inf interfere with the uh, the drive shaft. Um, and also I may make it removable this time because I have a feeling it'd be kind of irritating to try and pull that transmission out with this welded to the frame. So step one, cut off these crusty welds here at the top. Now I'll just unbolt the uh, transmission mount there, and then the other half will come out. Nice. Yeah, I guess we're gonna have to keep that little block in there for now, because this trans mount doesn't seem to be the right one for the transmission there. Well, I'll take it off anyway and see, because right now you can see that's pretty low, and if it raised up a little bit, it'd be a lot easier to clear over the drive shaft. The moment of truth. It's not just like a little dirty or corroded or something? I mean, it could be. It does kind of look wrong. It's huh? just like a smidgen wrong. Huh. 
Well, what I did is I based it off of the back one. I measured the back one. It is not the same. I don't know why I thought it would be. Uh, so much for all of that. Um, it's irrelevant that this drive shaft, the U-joint isn't right because that not flex enough. I was afraid of that. Yeah, that would kind of, uh, that would kind of clear right there. We'll take a little more out of it, but yeah, not bad. With a little bit of finagling, uh, in other words, a lot of die grinding, as you can tell by the fact that I'm covered with spicy glitter, the drive shaft now clears up here, or the U-joint, the U-joint clears itself um, at the angle that it needs to go, which is still a very steep angle, but you know, uh, it's just gonna have to work because it's what we got. So now I just need to get the right U-joint uh, tracked down, which I'm working on that right now. But once we get that in, then the drive shaft can be properly installed. But in the meantime, I can work on making a new transmission cross member because now I have the drive shaft in there to know uh, where exactly it can and can't go. Yeah, also I'm looking at this and realizing that I just kind of arbitrarily picked this as the top, and if I had done it the other way, this might have cleared a lot easier because this yoke is much slimmer than this yoke for whatever reason. So that's interesting. Time to build a cross member. To build the new transmission cross member, I found this chunk of uh, channel here. It's only about eight inch, an eighth of an inch thick, but with some reinforcements that'll be plenty strong. Kind of measured it out with a little bit of extra on each side. I've got the bolt hole, bolt pattern here. So I'm just gonna cut, cut it to length, drill the bolt holes and kind of hold it up there and see. And then the plan is gonna be, I'm gonna cut the flange on it here and then bend it up. there right now because it has to be between the frame rails and it is not cut to length of that yet. But I think it will work. If I measure the distance of a few things. Oh good. Drop the sparing cap in the dirt again. That's okay. It's the wrong one anyway. Between the actual frame rails it's probably well like 20 feet. Nothing fancy, but I just, it's easier to do it this way than cut it out of anything else. Just drew up a real quick bracket here that's gonna just be the end plates of this. So you can see I made bolt holes. The plates will just weld onto here with bolt holes right here inside the channel. They'll be a little bit annoying to get to, but not that bad. Weld those plates on, bolt the whole thing up underneath there, and then, and then I can tack these seams here, drill holes for the bolts. <laughs> out this shiny new Blue Demon welding helmet. It's like daylight. This is insane. It's not even green. Yeah, I can see you pretty good. It's amazing. It's so bizarre being able to see this clearly. seems 
pretty snug. Yeah, it's just kind of a weird, mostly it's just kind of a weird angle to get it up in there. I didn't account for the thickness of the plates that I welded on the end. I mean, I did, but I didn't count for it enough. I mean, like it fits between, because of course it's still adjustable because these aren't welded yet. But for it to be in between, it's too high. So what I've come up with as a solution um, is I'm gonna drill the holes for this side where I want it to be, bolt it in. And then this side, I'm just gonna cut it off right here and then shorten it a little bit and then weld it back together. It doesn't really make any difference. Getting a drill in here to drill these holes would be uh, a real pain. So I'm just gonna go the easy route and plasma cut them out. of effort making it accurate the first time in all one piece so you can just bend it and then uh screw it up and just cut it anyway make it out of separate pieces anyway you know because because that seems like a good idea Dude, this is my new drone stance, for real. This is sick. <laughs> Well, I think that's a cross member. It's all bolted in, welded up, and uh, it's uh, significantly lighter and uh, better than the old one. Well, it's not stronger, but the old one was way overkill strong anyway. Most importantly, it's got plenty of clearance for the drive shaft. Gotta go pick up the U-joint to adapt that, but in the meantime, I can work on the new shackles. We got all these shiny, stainless, water jet cut parts from Zometry. So now, I can open them all up and assemble them. And then we'll have better suspension. Check out the precision on that. They look really nice. Yeah. And Zometry doesn't just do water jet. They do uh, CNC milling, 3D printing, like just about every CNC process you can imagine. Zometry can do it. But uh, for this for this particular one, water jet was the move. Let's see, yeah, so that goes like that, that goes in there. Oh, I didn't account for the, uh, I'm gonna have to sand that down a little bit. That's my bad, not Zometries. <laughs> I didn't make the hole that's thousands of an inch bigger and they're so perfect that um, it's exactly the same size. Yeah. Now that's what I call a snug fit. Big old brass knuckles here. Boom, boom, boom. Got the leaf spring spread it doesn't want to go around that bumper. Oh, here it goes. Yeah, it's probably also all the way about all the way extended right now. 
Uh, I'm gonna have to cut a big notch out of the bumper anyway, because the new shackles are like twice as long. So it's gonna travel up into Seems like a little love tap with a hammer and just go boink. Yeah, probably. But I don't know if you want your hand there. Well, I guess no, it's it just gonna matter. go in. Yeah. I just think the first thing, the obvious thing, and sometimes that is not the right thing. And it could actually be the dangerous thing. Is this satisfying? Wow. It's like the most perfect part we've ever had. Yeah. I really want I to see the machine that can blow water that hard. Just... <laughs> That's crazy. Just, so it's water combined with abrasive. The super fine abrasive powder mixed in with the water. Wow. But I think it's like... Yeah, it's many thousands. We of should PSI. get one of those. How much do they cost? Well, the one that did that was probably like a quarter million dollars. But... Oh! Wow. Maybe we can get a loan from Whistling Diesel. <laughs> or maybe he's out of money after his Ferrari incident. I don't think I understand the physics here. Ethan obviously does, or he'd be as nervous as I am. It's, you think it's gonna like fall when I, I see take this like out? it's gonna go like straight, like well, bam. But that's not what happened, obviously. I guess it's sprung steel, so it's probably sprung to be curved. Because when you yeah. suspension it, so it's supposed to be curved like that. To some extent, yeah. Okay, so it doesn't want to be flat. No. Okay. It seems like it'd be sketchy if it wanted I mean, to be flat. I mean, it wants to be probably a little bit flatter. And it's probably- We're about to find out where it wants to be. <laughs> that was so anticlimactic. Yeah. It just went blah. Man, it's so cool that it's stainless. It's just gonna look like that, all dope. Yeah, that's why I wanted to do it that way. You see this little situation here? Well, yeah, I forgot to, to, this is not my best moment here. I forgot to unbolt the top of the shock, so it kind of you know, stretched it out a little bit. I'm sure the first bump we hit, it'll just yoink right back. Probably more or less. Before, when it was sitting here, it had basically no suspension travel because this part just ran into this and then it couldn't move. It'll probably sit a little bit higher, Ow. Oh. Yeah, I know, Bjorn. I'm doing dumb stuff. Oh, Ethan, you know how you're talking about your third drawer in your dishwasher that has the knives the that little rack on top. I yeah. washed while you were gone? Yeah. When I went home, I did some exploring. <laughs> and it turns out you have the same thing and didn't know for like I a year? I have one of those, too. And I found a spatula in there that's probably been washed a hundred times. You want to see if you can get this bolt in there? Yeah. Is that enough? Oh no, the bumper's in the way. Looks like suspension that actually travels. That does look like suspension that actually travels. Very nice. Look at that. Hey! That's gonna be a little different than the ride quality. Way because better. Before you couldn't make it move in any direction ever. Between that and four wheel drive, we're just gonna be unstoppable. Something like that. It's pretty much where the leaf spring wants to be, and that's where it's forced to be the way that it was yep. built in the first place. Well, I think what happened is they bought these giant lift springs to lift it tall enough, uh -huh. but they didn't get different shackles or different mounts. Learned a few things in the last one. Also, it's raining today. We went from like 100 degrees to raining in just a couple of days. 
it'd be nice if uh, the new shop was 100% done so we could not be working in the rain, but... Probably obvious to many people who work with leaf springs more often than I do. But those giant shackles made it too tall in the front. Um, they were the, really the only plausible solution to make these springs work. Um, but now it's so much taller that the drive shaft is too steep of an angle again. So I think what I'm going to do is um, lift the front of this up with the skid steer. And then um, because I don't have a jack that goes tall enough. And then I'm going to take out a couple of leafs out of this leaf pack here. Side down, this one to go. We'll get rid of that big thick spring at the bottom. We'll need that. And we'll get rid of the bottom leaf. Let's start with that, see how that goes. Yeah, okay. Well, that's better. The, uh, the shocks line up again, so that's good. Ooh, look at that squishy ride. That's the way we like it. That's bouncy. Well, it won't bounce so much once we hook the shocks up there. You know, right now it's extra oh, right. bouncy. Yeah, these, these are, are not connected. They're not connected. Well, it's an annoying extra step in terms of trying to get this thing driving today. But at the end of the day, we get a better result. Softer ride, more flex. This is what happens when you try to uh, plan ahead, but you don't plan ahead far enough, or rather, uh, you measure things when they're in the wrong position. So my drive shaft is about an inch too long. The only real solution for that is to cut it apart, make it shorter, and weld it back together. It'll no longer be balanced, but that's okay, because this thing's never gonna see highway speeds anyway. And if it did, the vibrations of this drive shaft not being balanced would be the least of our worries. Got this here in the lathe. I'm gonna use the lathe to uh, take the weld off and then I'll leave this end chucked in here and it'll stay straight. And then of course this end is centered on the live center. So it should stay reasonably straight. When I put it back together, I can just squish it on there and re-weld it in the lathe and uh, we should be good. comes the fun part, pressing this back together. I know I said I was gonna do it in the lathe, um, but that's cause I'm an idiot. I forgot how this works. Oh, are you kidding? Quarter of an inch, come on. Can, can we just agree that that's ridiculous? Can we just make that not happen? No. Gotta double check so you don't get wrecked. 
You gotta check yourself before you wreck yourself? Is that yes, what you're saying? That's what I was meaning to say. That quote came out a little swindly. Oh no. Good, that's not what I want. Yikes. Can you just go in the right Oh, also don't be a dingleberry. Press it in in the right angle. That's why you make marks. And I did. And then I forgot about the marks. I always like that sound. It's, it's always just, satisfying. It's just like a really big sigh, you know? It's just like, oh. It's been under a lot of pressure for a while, and it's just, oh. Relaxing. Yeah, it's amazing what having um, better tools and uh, being able to see does. I mean, also I just had, you know, it, there's a lot of factors here, but those are some of the prettiest welds I've done in a while. Not perfectly consistent because there's a lot less, like you can see here, like perfect temperatures on that side and that side, but then here and here, they're a little overheated. I mean, barely overheated, really. It's still within a good range, but color-wise, this side's a little hot because there wasn't as much metal to soak up the heat right there, so. That should do the trick. I got it welded on there. The marks are aligned. And there's still a mark here to indicate where that lines up with the other one. So now we just gotta put the right U-joint in. And we'll be one step closer. We're getting there. We're getting there a little bit at a time. Really, it's going fairly quickly. We just need to get, we need to get it done today because Edwin's leaving for a few weeks. So we gotta get a bunch of footage done so he can have the videos edited ahead of time. Edited ahead. That's a fun edited ahead. Doesn't we should call Will right now and have him say that three times three fast. Three times fast. Edited ahead. Oh, look at that. Perfect. We have extra flex on the downward direction. We have extra length on the plunge. This is how it should have been from the start. Now we just need to do the rears, and they are easy peasy compared to the fronts. Nothing in the way. And uh, they don't even need that plate in the middle. I designed it with that, but then the frame's in the way, and also they're not that long, and they're 3 eighths of an inch thick, so they're probably plenty strong. That's super easy, and it looks super nice, too. Much easier than the fronts. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm not using the plates. They're smaller. There's not a bumper in the way. Look at this. It'll actually flex now. It's a miracle. This thing should be considerably nicer to drive. Well, I think it's time for a test drive. Uh, first, we'll do a little, uh, a little lap around and see how the suspension feels. And then, uh, then we'll flex it out on some rocks and see if the uh, four-wheel drive works. Also, Sam's here today, and I'm really kind of annoyed that he didn't get to ride in it in its previous state, because like... Oh, so you've already done a ride. Oh, we've driven it, yeah. Okay. And the suspension was so bad, you can't imagine it. It basically was worse than no suspension. Well, I'm going straight to the top. Yeah, yeah so you, you don't even get <laughs> to experience to how much better it is. It was a good day to come visit. Yeah. Did, wait, did you, was your first drive without the drive shaft then? Or you just, mm -hmm. Yeah, no, all the drives so far have been without the front drive shaft. Yeah. Wait till you see the start procedure. All right. <laughs> you put the, push the key thing. in, and then you hit start, and then yeah. you go like this. Yes, you do. That is amazing. I like the blink. You could leave this in here, no one would ever start it. No, I have no idea <laughs> how to do how to start. Never figured it out. Well, It'd be flipping these things.
kind of sounds funky. Yeah, I don't know what that was about. <laughs> Maybe you just needed to clear his throat. I mean, compared to the Bronco, feel stable, right? Compared to the Bronco, anything feels stable. Hey, hey! Not bad for no dip locks. Look at that! Look at all that flex! I mean, right now our flex is just limited by body. Uh, well, yeah, the uh, the ride quality has increased dramatically, but it is still a leaf sprung chassis with 46 inch tires that probably weigh like 400 pounds a piece. So it's still a little rough, but a whole lot better than it was. anything other than that fluid that we knew was leaking. It feels like it's right underneath me. I mean everything's fine, just the transmission cooler fan uh, is uh, is messed up. <laughs> oh shoot! Wasn't it brand new? Yeah, but the, the transmission mount is so floppy that the transmission bounced around and smashed the trans cooler fans. sunroof and we have a little headroom. Oh yeah. yeah. Just like a 
thought we were gonna get stuck on that stump. How did it look on camera? Cause I was like, oh. You just railed right over it. I feel like the front settled. Is, if you, is it leaning forward? Like just visually? Yes. Yeah, I think the front suspension is kind of settled in now and the rear, I think we need to take like a leaf out in the rear now to make it equal. That or put one back in in the front. It might be a little too soft in the front. Overall though, ride quality is like thumbs up now compared to what it was. Yeah, it's like a premium roller coaster instead of a jank roller coaster. Yeah, I mean, I yeah. still think it has a ways to go for premium roller coaster status, but like, <laughs> it's so much more premium than it was, that's for sure. <laughs> nice, that's what we do. <laughs> How's that back seat? The back is worse than the front. <laughs> Having grilled up front, that's the premium place to be. <laughs> Do a I boulder think mission whole... around this thing. You still got well, it, you man. Off no, I just swung. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Just a swing gainer. This yeah, yeah. Swing. Very casual. <laughs> so I had an idea on how we could scientifically measure the amount of flex this Mini Cooper has. And uh, Ethan agreed. And Ethan doesn't always agree to my ideas. Not always. Uh, actually, usually he says no. <laughs> <laughs> but this one he liked. I must be getting better ideas. I think this one's I gonna work it's great. He gets to pick something up with the skid stair. <laughs> That's why he said yes. With our current limitations, that's max flex, which is still a lot. A lot. And there's a lot of limitations. Like we're running into body and I need to trim more room for the shackles. So it's got a lot more flex to uh, flex to go. I, I think it'd be safe to say that's the uh, most a Mini Cooper has ever flexed. <laughs> that could very well be. <laughs> Flexing on all them normal Mini Coopers. It smells premium too. It smells efficient. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, definitely, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll pass the mission. Yeah, and then these, I didn't even get around to this, but these need to be a little bit notched so the shackles can flex more too. That's, right now actually, that's our most limiting factor because otherwise this side could compress more. Yeah. So if we notched that out, it would flex even more. Nice. There's uh, still a little bit of fine tuning to do to make it perfect, but um, that was a great success. It's uh, about a thousand times better ride quality than it used to be. We have actual flex, and more importantly, we've got four wheel drive. So now it uh, actually works almost as good as it looks. And uh, the shackles worked out. Um, the drive shaft miraculously worked out and hasn't broken yet because that's kind of a weird angle, but um, you know, it worked. Yeah, I'm stoked with how these shackles turned out. I'm glad I uh, ordered them from Zometry and used the uh, 3 8 stainless plate so that they can just stay as shiny and awesome as they are right now. And Zometry does so much more than just sheet cutting like this. The options are essentially limitless. CNC milling, 3D printing. So be sure to check that out because Zometry is a really cool company and we'd love to keep working with them. So. Check out the link in the description.